Do you struggle with audio to make your voice sound clean, crisp, and rich while you're streaming? If you do, pay attention, because I'm gonna show you how to take any cheap microphone or any expensive microphone and make it sound professional with a few easy tips and tricks that's gonna be one of the best changes that will get you up and running in just a few minutes. Let's go. Hey, it's me, it's Wild coming at you for my stream support playlist. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow and improve your stream, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. And hey, at any point in this video, if you like the products or the services that I'm talking about, oh, did you all a favor? I put links in the show notes below, so make sure you check them out. So audio is any key component to any live stream or even just content creation on YouTube. To be honest, you got bad audio, you're probably not gonna get much viewership on anything. But not to worry, I'm gonna show you how to take any microphone, yeah, any microphone that you currently have, and I'm gonna make it that much better by giving you some simple tips and tricks that not a lot of people really talk about. And this will work for a whole host of different USB mics and XLR mics, so let's get right into it. First thing you need to do is learn about your microphone. I mean, I get it. When you first get your microphone off Amazon, you're really excited, you just plug that sucker in and you start going, but you need to learn what type of microphone that you got. And you know, everybody gets really confused because you see all these podcasts and movies and TV shows, and everybody automatically thinks that they have a shotgun microphone. And you need to learn what type of microphone you got so that way you get the best results out of it. One of the strongest things that everyone seems to overlook is learning about the insides of your microphone. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what your capsule is in your microphone? <laughs> I guess a better question is, do you know what a capsule is? A capsule is the actual receiver that takes in the sounds. And for a lot of people, they have their microphone pointing the wrong way or they treat their microphone like a shotgun microphone. Mm. You most likely don't have a shotgun or directional microphone. Learning where your capsule is ensures that you're gonna get rich sounds through your microphone. And for most microphone companies out there, the reason they put their logo or badge on the front is because that's where the capsule is pointing out from. Right from this mesh screen here, the capsule is just sitting right behind it on the front side here. It's not on the back and it's not on top. And this is a common mistake that you see with blue microphones. That's why they put their logo on front, which is why they started adding it on their boxes, because you probably see a lot of people talking through their blue Yeti just like this. Mm. Nowadays, a lot of microphones have switches or dials on them, and what those switches and dials are for are for different modes that the microphone is capable of. Just like my Yeti Pro right here, it has different directional patterns that it's gonna pick up. Now, the one that you're gonna be most enticed about to increase audio in your stream right now is cardioid. And what cardioid allows is, is sound directly coming from the microphone's front while allowing sound to fall off at the sides and negating sound from the back, which is perfect for live streaming and content creation on YouTube. Now, if your streamer video is picking up a lot of background noise, it's most likely because your microphone is set on an omnidirectional voice pattern, which means it's picking up sound from a full 360 degrees around, which is why you wanna set your microphone to cardioid, so that way it's only picking up sound from the front. Not sure if your microphone has a cardioid pattern? Well, check the back and check the settings on the actual drivers for it. Or you could just always look in the manual that comes with your microphone, but let's be honest, if you read, you wouldn't be here. A cardioid pattern kind of looks like a, uh, like a butt or a heart or a pizza with a slice kind of missing. That's kind of how you'll know. Just set it to that and you will sound better right off the bat. If your microphone has a gain controller, try setting it down to the lowest setting that is possible on it before it affects the actual sound of your voice and volume. Because this is gonna help reduce background noise, peaking and echoing within your sound. And oh yeah, one of my favorites, it's gonna help reduce the factor of that white staticky echoey power noise that comes to your microphone when you crank it up way too much. Now, if your microphone is too quiet when you turn the gain down, I actually find it better to go into the gain settings on whatever program you're using, whether it be something like OBS or Audacity or whatever you use, and adjusting the gain in there. I find that to be better, but just to let you know, each manufacturer of a microphone is a little bit different, so it may take a little tweaking on both sides to find the correct sweet spot for your gain. Now we need to find a clear path for your microphone, and I want you all to do me a favor. Stop putting the microphone directly in front of your mouth. 
This is doing you no service at all on gaining viewership. Every person out there who has a microphone needs to create a clear path. We all get into our mind from watching TVs, movies, voiceovers, and recordings from singers. We all see these candid photos where the microphone is literally only about one to two inches away. And that's not how it works. It doesn't work like that at all. There's actually a good amount of space between the microphone and the person who's projecting the sound. And there's a couple of reasons for that. When you have enough space, you're allowing the air to dissipate before it can go into the microphone. Hence reducing plosives, which are things like when you say Peter, Paul picked a bunch of peppers, all those P sounds that are pushing air aren't being picked up in your microphone, which is gonna hurt a lot of people's ears. Another thing is peaking. When you have the mic really close, you're probably gonna get really excited when you're streaming and you're probably gonna enunciate a lot of words, which is gonna blow out the microphone, which is gonna blow out the eardrums of your viewers. Very bad. And the last one is something that a lot of people don't ever talk about. If you're really engaged with being a streamer, you accidentally probably spit on your microphone and not know it. So having a distance there allows for the moisture to go down in a way, so that way it won't eat away at your mesh on your screen there, which is why it's there to protect it. Because I want you to have your microphone for a, a long time. Now, generally, whenever you're streaming, yeah, I will agree. Having a microphone in front of you is best but you need to make sure you have enough space for the path that we stated for before. But if you want a cool, awesome tip, do me a favor, just set the microphone down a few inches so that way your air can travel out of the way and it'll still pick up those rich sounds. Or if you want, you can move it up and flip the microphone down. That way your air can still travel through and trust me, it'll still pick up your rich sounds. You won't notice any difference Plus, it's gonna do a lot better for your microphone. Now, one of my favorite things to do is I actually don't like to have my microphone in front of me at all. I actually have it skewed off somewhere between like, I don't know, 20 and 45 degrees off to the left-hand side, and it sounds just as good. And I know my air and plosives are not gonna hit it, and I know it's in a safe spot. And another awesome tip, the reason I love having it off to the side is because if you're streaming just like this or showing any type of content creation where you have to show your face, your mic isn't blocking your face. It's not all the way up in here, in here, and you know, it's taking away from the visual representations of your stream. Just have it set over to the side and you're good. If you need any audio checks, go ahead and check out some of the other videos I've done on microphones, and you can see how it sounds by just setting it off to the side. It makes a huge difference. Vibration and bouncing of sounds is something that's very small, but it makes a huge impact when you can take those things away from your streams or content creation. So step number one is get your microphone off of your freaking desk. Get rid of these stands and invest in a good quality boom arm. If you have a light microphone, you know you can get away with one of these newer boom arms. It's gonna be fine. I don't care what people say about it. This thing works great for only $12 or 15 bucks. But if you wanna get something that's a little bit better, I recommend the Rode PSA-1. That's a very good one. Or if you wanna take a look at the Blue Compass, which I've done a review about, I'll put that in the top corner right there. That's a great arm that you can use that's gonna help Get, the, uh, get your microphone off your desk. And the reason you wanna get off your desk is because whenever you're projecting sound towards a hard surface like your desk, it's gonna bounce down into the desk and go back into the microphone, which is gonna make not really a crisp sound. And when the microphone's up in the air like this, all the sound that you don't want just passes by it and it's only gonna pick up the richness of your voice, which is what I want. Now, if you do get a boom arm, make sure that you get something that works for your needs. Think about height and length and all that stuff. But to reduce vibration, you may wanna consider investing into a mount, a cradle, or a shock mount, which is how it connects to the end, which I totally forgot I just put over here. So here you go, here is a shock mount that I have from Blue. You just attach your microphone in here, so anytime that the boom arm shakes or you accidentally bump it, all of these threads and all these elastic bands right here will absorb all the shock, so that way it won't affect the microphone and its innards from rattling, rattling around, ruining the audio quality of your stream. I am always astonished by how many streamers out there do not have a voice pop filter. This thing literally costs like eight to 12 bucks. Get one, it's gonna help reduce peaking and those voice plosives that we talked about before. And it's not gonna be that intrusive. You can get some that connect to your boom arm up there. You can have some that sit directly on the actual screen of the microphone. You can even get some that snap on and you can get one that's just like this, which can basically connect to wherever you want. And this is gonna help reduce those plosives and the air that you're pushing into the microphone so that way you're not blowing out any eardrums please get one of these. Now, one of the more complex ways to really increase the sound quality of your microphone comes down to the filters that are available in the broadcast or audio software that you're using. 
and you want to take a look at these filters because introducing them will really increase the quality of your microphone. The first filter that you should look at is a compressor filter, which essentially is every time you yell or do loud noises into your microphone, it's going to set a nice level for it, which is great if you're a really enthusiastic or a ragey, salty streamer, sometimes just like me. Or it's going to help out with the low ends if you're whispering or being like sneaky or what sometimes is happening really big on Twitch right now is ASMR. It's gonna help boost up that sound on the lower end for you. The next filter I want you to take a look at is the gain filter within the software. And we talked about this earlier in the video, and this is gonna adjust the overall volume. I find the gain filters on the software do a little bit better job than the gain filter on the microphone. So tweak this if you need to make adjustments to the overall volume of your microphone, but make sure you don't put it too high. Noise gates are one of my favorite filters that I use on every streaming software that I have. And essentially what this does is that you are putting a threshold of where sound has to go over before it's detected by the microphone unit. So if you have low sounds or sounds that you want to negate, for example, like keystrokes on a keyboard or mouse clicking, which can be very annoying, trust me it is, this can make that be below that threshold so it's not picked up on your microphone. I recommend every single person have a noise gate out there. Noise suppression is a great filter that doesn't get talked about a lot. You know how we were talking about omnidirectional and how there's 360 degrees of sounds? Even though your microphone may be on a cardioid pattern, the sensitivity of that mic or capsule in there is still gonna pick up a lot of sounds that are coming from the entire room or your entire house or what's going on outside. So adding a noise suppression filter is gonna help eliminate background noises. This is good if you have really loud fans on your PC or just your AC unit or heating unit is on in your house. Or if you have that annoying brother that's screaming on the background or babies or any noise coming outside from cars or motor motorcycles, anything like that. Having noise suppression is really gonna clean up that environment uh, sound that's coming into your microphone and negate it or at least suppress it down. Now, voice filters can be very difficult. And if you would like an in-depth video that goes way more on how to get the most out of voice filters to make your microphone sound velvety smooth, I'll be more than happy to do a video on that. Just do me a favor, leave me a comment below so that way I can see how much engagement there is for it. I just nailed all the best free ways you can improve your microphone literally right now. Yeah, go do it and you're gonna see a world of difference. In fact, I recommend recording yourself before you make the changes and after you make the changes. You will be blown away by the improvements. You are welcome. This video is so awesome. I'm literally sweating by the end of it. That's how California rolls. If you want any more helpful tips or tricks on how to make anything in your stream be bigger and better, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your friends down there. I love helping all of you become bigger and better. If you'd like to help me, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and you can even go over to twitch.tv slash wild for games, where you can help support me by hitting that almighty subscribe button. I will see you all in my next video coming up real soon. Take care all and peace.